Don't beat yourself up because you have fallen short of the glory of God. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Your flesh is what's condemning you. That's not the spirit's approach to when we make mistakes. The spirit approach is forgiveness and repentance. But the flesh approach is condemnation, punishment. So there's constantly this war happening within us. And I believe that's why it's so imperative to stay in the word of God and in his presence. Because you'll be so filled with the spirit that the gunk of the flesh, the gunk of the world has really no rightful place. Hey, hey, what is up everybody? I am Alexis Ada, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a very, very chill setting. As you can see, like my lights are still up in the background. Today is February 3rd, it's 9.51 a.m. So right now I'm currently like in my prayer time. I often have these moments where I'm like, I have to share like these nuggets of wisdom. And currently right now I am in the book of Philippians, Philippians 4. And I'm also um, <clears throat> referring to a Bible plan. I'll make sure I like put it on the screen, which Bible plan I'm reading. Also link it down below. Um, this is one of the best Bible plans I've ever done in my entire life. Like literally it's extremely helpful and it has just been such a blessing to me, my life and just the within the past three days. Before I get into this, I just want to share like a, just like a little brief story. Um, yesterday I was on the phone with my aunt and before I got on the phone with her, my belly had begun stirring. Now this is one of the ways, uh, the main ways that the Holy Spirit communicates with me. So I'm just kind of like, what, like, what is it that you're communicating in this moment, right? So, you know, I was feeling how I was feeling and I, the feeling heightened when I got on the phone with her. So in that moment, she was like, what does the Bible say? The Bible says to think on these things. And I'm just like, oh my God, I need this right now because... I just feel like in that moment, I just was like thinking so negatively. And if I'm being transparent, whenever I fall short, whenever I'm, I've fallen off or I've slipped up, I often, my, my carnal, my flesh, number one resort is to punish self. I'm not thinking of, oh, go feed your spirit. My, like my flesh isn't thinking, go feed your spirit or go reward yourself. My flesh ultimately, it like always resorts to you've been falling, you've, you've fallen, punishment, condemnation. Like, no, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve that. And I, that's something that I'm currently struggling with. So when she said, what does the Bible say? Like, think on these things. Cause when my, when my stomach is turning, I'm automatically thinking like, oh, it's something bad. Like. God finna do his big one. Like he is not playing with me. You know, like I'm automatically thinking that. And I'm like, Alexis, you serve a good, good father. Not that he's not going to correct or discipline you, but he wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. So it's like, why not think on these things whenever you're feeling a stirring? Why not take it as a sign that um, God is getting ready to do something incredible in your life. Why not wait with great expectation? Why, you know, so when she said that it really, really blessed me in a way that really just stuck with me up until this morning, because one of the key scriptures of today in the Bible plan is Philippians four. It says, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And I just was like, wow, that's confirmation. She just began saying like, you know, this could be God signaling to you. And she mentioned something that I have been praying for. And I'm just like, wow. And then she mentioned what I prayed for, but she exaggerated it. Like she she thought bigger than what I had been thinking. And that's another thing that I'm currently struggling with is thinking small. Like, I'm like, I serve a, a great God. Like, it delights him to give me the kings to the kingdom. It, it, it gives him good pleasure to bless his child. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I feel like oftentimes I'm like, okay, God, you know, I don't want to ask you too much. I just want, you know, like a, he like, girl, if you don't go bigger. That's something that he's working you know on me with it's just 
expecting greater. I just want to let you know, don't beat yourself up because you have fallen short of the glory of God. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Your flesh is what's condemning you. That's not the spirit's approach to when we make mistakes. The spirit approach is forgiveness and repentance. But the flesh approach is condemnation, punishment. So there's constantly this war happening within us. And I believe that's why it's so imperative to stay in the word of God and in his presence. Because you'll be so filled with the spirit that the gunk of the flesh, the gunk of the world has really no rightful place within you. So lately I just have been trying to being very intentional about filling my spirit. And that's my advice to you is continue to fill your spirit. Continue to think on the things that are good, that are noble, that are just, that are pure, that are lovely, that are admirable, that are worthy of praise. Think on those things. Philippians 4 and 6 says, don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me. This is Paul speaking and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. So I want to go and read the breakdown for you guys. It says every time we begin to worry, we should see that as a call from God telling us that it's time to pray. Just caveating what my aunt believed I was feeling, that also could have been a signal to Alexis, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. And even if I didn't know what to pray or have the words to pray in that moment, the Holy Spirit is an intercessor. So he is inter he has the authority the ability to intercede on my behalf and pray through me. You get what I'm saying? Prayer is relational communication with God. And this is something I always tell people. Don't overthink prayer. Don't overcomplicate prayer. Prayer is just communication with God. It doesn't have to always be this long drawn out thing. It's not about the length of your prayer, but, by, but your heart posture in that prayer. Your prayer could be, thank you, Lord. And he know exactly what that thank you, Lord, means. He's able to discern and decipher that I know exactly what this means. I know exactly what my child is saying. So good. It seeks to draw resources from the invisible spiritual realm into visible physical reality. The sobering truth is that the more you worry, the less you pray. But the more you pray, the less you worry. So good. So good. When you make a petition, be specific. A moment in which you are plagued by worry is not the time for one of those general prayers for God to bless the world. <laughs> to deal with anxiety, make sure your petitions are precise. Get real with God. Get real with God. Prayer can often feel frustrating. Prayer can often feel frustrating. Like when you go to a soda machine, put in your money, punch the button, and nothing comes out. But thinking of it in those terms causes us to miss how prayer works. God wants us to make requests with thanksgiving. Give thanks not for the problem itself, but for the God you are inviting into your specific problem. So good. Offering thanks is a demonstration of faith. And God's goodness and provision despite what you see. You could be praying like for me. I'm praying for my grandmother to be healed. Thank you God that it's already done. Thank you God that you are a healer. Thank you God for being a deliverer. Thank you God for being a man of your word. I thank you God that it's already done. I may not see it but I'm believing that you are going to make a way out of no way. I'm believing that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You have to. Your faith is complete. When you match your faith with your works. My faith is believing, but my works is earnest prayer. My works is surrender. My works look like surrendering control. My works look like omitting doubt. 
When you pray as instructed, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard you in Christ Jesus. In other words, in other words, you'll experience calm in the midst of chaos. Chaos. You will know God heard your prayer, not necessarily because the problem is solved, but because of the peace that God gives you. This is even confirmation to me as I read this. You will know that God, y'all, he is, listen, he is the prince of peace. He is the prince of peace. You will know when God answered your prayer, when you feel the peace of God, not when it's necessarily solved, but when you feel the peace of God, it's like, oh, I know my father heard me. I know my father heard me before getting into my prayer. I say, God, you ask me, you're requiring me to do something that I do not want to do. And it makes me very sad to do this very thing. It, it breaks my heart to do this very thing. But allow me to experience your peace as I walk in what it is you're requiring me to do. And allow me to experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding as I walk in my obedience. And when I tell you, as I navigated through my devotion, my reading time, I began to feel the peace of God as I was reading. God is fully aware that his will requires for us to do hard things. His way requires for us to do hard things. But he's like, I will give you peace that don't even make no sense. I will give you joy in chaos. When, when you should be losing your mind, you're going to be saved. Because my peace is upon you. So good. It says, it's as if God puts soldiers in centuries around your feelings and thoughts. My God. It says, we don't want to lose the peace God grants us in the next hour or the next day. So to prevent that, Paul says that we shall dwell on what, are, what is ever true, noble, pure, just, lovely, commendable. Worthy of praise. We're to focus our attention there. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, those whose thoughts are fixed on him, those who keep their minds stayed on him, he will keep them in perfect peace. And whatever is good, whatever is just, whatever is noble, whatever is lovely, is the epitome of who God is. So he's like, I need you to keep your thoughts fixed on me listen let me show you something look at my screensaver it literally says focus on me not the storm and the reference scripture is matthew 14 22 through 33 focus on me and not what you're going through focus on me and not your feelings because when you focus on me You'll be, I will grant you the God perspective, which is the right perspective so that you may effectively navigate your current circumstance. This is good. I love this because I'm so comfortable. Y'all see my knee in the camera and everything, but I'm just like, I just wanted to be like y'all in my living room because right now I'm in my living room. Like us, you on my couch, you on my beanbag and I'm at my desk, period. We having a conversation. It says one of the reasons we don't keep our peace is that we tend to dwell on the things that are set in opposition to the peace we're asking for. Somebody missed that. One of the reasons, y'all, that we don't keep our peace is that we tend to dwell on the things that are set in opposition of the peace that we're asking for. If we continue to entertain messages that work against our peace, anxiety will soon return. We must therefore ask ourselves if we are able to praise God for the things that we are dwelling on. If we can't, then we'll soon lose the peace God has given us. The Philippians were to handle things the way that they had seen Paul handle things. He was in prison, but he was praising God instead of worrying. One of the purposes of the church is to connect believers with other kingdom minded people. We need support and we need good examples. When we're rejoicing and praying and dwelling on the right things and watching the right people, 
We don't just have the peace of God. We have the God of peace. We get his peace and we get his presence. That's all for today for Nuggets of Wisdom. And the book that I read out of today, this is the Tony Evans Study Bible. This is the CSB version. This is one of the, listen y'all, baby, go, go get this. So I just pray that this little nugget was a blessing to you. It was a blessing to me because I'm like, God, thank you so much for just showing up. All I need you to do is show up because I know when you show up, you're going to show out. And you ain't going to do nothing less. I'm going to end this in prayer and see you on your way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. I thank you for just allowing your word to just be living. Like being, I, I just thank you for allowing your word for being alive and active, oh God. I thank you for being the true and living word, oh God. I just thank you for your people, for the vessels that are going to hear this, these nuggets of wisdom, oh God. God, I pray right now that you lean in and hear your children's humble cry. I pray, oh God, that you grant us the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that guards our heart, the peace that guards our mind, oh God. Help us to keep our thoughts fixed on the things that are noble, that are just, that are good, that are lovely, that are from up from heaven above. Help us to stay, keep our thoughts fixed on those things, oh God. For as we were just reminded, when we have the God of peace, when we have your peace, oh God, we have your presence. And we never, ever want to be dismissed from your presence, oh God. Lord God, I pray that you allow these nuggets to, to penetrate the hearts and minds of your people, oh God. So as they navigate through their day, that they have just little glimpse of the word that you've spoken through me to them. God, I thank you for just being God. I thank you for being a provider. I thank you for being a comforter in times of trouble. I thank you for being for being a very present help, oh God. I thank you for being Adonai. I thank you for being Elroy, the God who sees. I thank you, oh God, for seeing us when no one else does, oh God. I thank you for understanding us when no one else does, God. I pray, oh God. That you dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Hallelujah. Father God, do what only you can do. Heal like only you can. Make ways that only you can make, oh God. And we will be intentional to stay in communion with you, oh God. We will be intentional to totally surrender so that we might experience true worship, oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for your word that sets us free. Thank you, O oh God, for your word that is a rescue, O oh God. Thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. I thank you, O oh God, for being a strong tower. I thank you, O oh God, for being a mighty fortress. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind every devil in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We take every thought captive and make and we demand it to obey Christ in the name of Jesus. Though we are humans, we don't wage war as humans do. For the weapons of our warfare are mighty, are not carnal, but mighty by the pulling down of strongholds. So we bind every stronghold that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we break every barrier. We break every barrier right now. Oh my God, that is blocking us from experiencing the peace of God. That is blocking us from experiencing the knowledge of God. That is blocking us from experiencing the wisdom of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Mm. We bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We break the strongholds right now. I just feel chains breaking in the spirit. I hear yokes breaking in the spirit. Strongholds being loose in the spirit right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, do what only you can do. Not it won't be by your power. It won't be by your might, but it's going to be by the spirit of the Lord. So I just say spirit move, spirit move, spirit move, spirit move. 
spirit move. Allow your people to have a fresh encounter with you, oh God. Allow your people to have a fresh encounter with you, oh God. Allow the, allow them to discover you like never before, oh God. Rebe shete. Allow them to discover who they are in Christ. Allow us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, oh God. But to not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Hallelujah. For you said in your word mm, that you will make us new by changing the way that we think. Oh God. Hallelujah. God change my mind in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God transform our mind in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God. Have your way, great God. We believe that it's already done. We believe that it's already done. Hallelujah, God. Help us to stand on your word, oh God. Help us to stand on your word and rest in the promises and rest in the plans that you have for us. Help us to rest in your plans and not in our feelings for our feelings and emotions are ever changing, but your word is never changing. So God, we thank you for being the solid rock. We thank you for being a firm foundation. We thank you, oh God, for being a reliable father right now. Oh God, we surrender in the mighty name of Jesus. We stretch our hands to thee for there is no other help. We know we look to the hills from which cometh our help our help cometh from you oh god who created heaven and earth thank you oh god for having good plans for us but the plans you have for us are good they are good hallelujah god they may not feel good but they're happening for our good so father god we thank you we thank you oh god we thank you, oh God. We pray that you continue to order our steps, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we believe that it's already done. We will leave here more, we will leave here more peaceful than we entered. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. And we, we decree and declare right now that no devil in hell will destroy what you have built up. In the name of Jesus. God, I believe that it's already done. And I partner with heaven right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I seal this prayer with the blood of Jesus. Robo Shata. For the kingdom of darkness is rising. But you must fall. At the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow. At the name of Jesus. A thousand may fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand, but no evil shall come nigh thee. Devil, you are defeated and you lost another battle. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 I love you guys and I will see you on the next Nuggets of Wisdom.